Welcome, everyone, to the CodeZoltan channel. Today, our discussion revolves around Section 250.20 of the National Electrical Code, which pertains to grounding alternating current systems. During our presentation, we will explore which systems are required to be grounded, which systems are permitted but not required to be grounded, and also learn which circuits are prohibited from being grounded. Without further ado, let's bond together to discuss these sections. In our discussion, the term, system, specifically refers to the secondary winding of a transformer. One of the primary reasons for grounding the system is directly related to the voltage supplied by the transformer. In certain situations, grounding becomes necessary when the neutral conductor is used as the return path for the current in the system. To further explore the various reasons why an alternating current system should be grounded, let us continue our discussion in section 250.20 and state that alternating current systems shall be grounded in accordance with 250.20a, b, c, or d, unless prohibited elsewhere in the code. Other systems shall be permitted to be grounded. If such systems are grounded, they shall comply with the applicable provisions of this article. Systems that are required to be grounded are stated in sections 250.20a, b, c, or d. However, if a system is grounded, even though the code does not require it to be grounded, it shall comply with the grounded rules under this article. An example of an alternating current system that is permitted to be grounded but not explicitly mentioned in sections 250.20a, b, c, or d is a corner delta transformer connection, as noted in informational note 1 of the same section. Additionally, in informational note number 2, Circuits covered in the following sections are prohibited from being grounded. These are the following. 1. Circuits for electric cranes operating over combustible fibers in Class 3 locations, as provided in Section 503.155. The purpose is to eliminate sparks, or hot particles, due to a phase to ground fault. 2. Wiring and equipment within and above hazardous anesthetizing locations, as provided in Section 517.61. 3. Isolated power systems used in healthcare facilities as provided in Section 517.160. 4. Circuits for equipment within electrolytic cell line working zones as provided in Section 668.10. 5. Transformers and power supplies of underwater luminaires as provided in 680.23A2. What are the alternating current systems that shall be grounded? Section 250.20. A requires alternating current systems of less than 50 volts shall be grounded under any of the following conditions. 1. If supplied by transformers, if the transformer supply system exceeds 150 volts to ground. To illustrate this, let's consider a grounded distribution system with a secondary voltage of 480 volts for three phase and 277 volts for single phase. As the supply voltage exceeds 150 volts to ground, one of the transformer's secondary conductors must be connected to the ground. For condition 2, if supplied by transformers, if the transformer supply system is ungrounded. To illustrate this, let's take the example of a delta connected system, which is an ungrounded distribution system. In this case, regardless of the voltage, it is necessary to connect one of the transformer's secondary conductors to the ground. In the case of the third condition, if the alternating current system is installed outside as overhead conductors and the transformer primary conductors enter the building from outdoors as overhead conductors, the system must be grounded. This condition applies when the system operates at a voltage of less than 50 volts and the conductors are installed on poles outside the building. For the alternating current system of 50 volts to 1000 volts, the conditions are stated in section 250.20b. Alternating current systems of 50 volts to 1000 volts that supply premises wiring and premises wiring systems shall be grounded under any of the following conditions. Before proceeding, Let's clarify the term, premises wiring, as defined in the code. Premises wiring, system, interior and exterior wiring, including power, lighting, control, and signal circuit wiring together with all their associated hardware, fittings, and wiring devices, both permanently and temporarily installed. This includes, a, wiring from the service point or power source to the outlets, or b, wiring from and including the power source to the outlets where there is no service point, service point is the boundary of responsibility of the utility and the customer. Therefore, premises wiring can be categorized as follows. A. Wiring that extends from the service point or power source to the outlets. 
B. Wiring that extends from the power source to the outlets in cases where there is no service point. Now, here are the conditions for alternating current systems of 50 volts to 1000 volts. 1. If the system can be grounded so that the maximum voltage to ground on the ungrounded conductors does not exceed 150 volts. The accompanying illustration demonstrates the grounding requirements outlined in section 250.20 B. 1. For different system configurations. Specifically, it depicts the grounding requirements for a 120 volt, single phase, two wire system and a 120 240th volt, single phase, three wire system. Additionally, it showcases the grounding requirements for a 208Y, 120 volt, three phase, four wire system. In all of these shown systems, it is necessary to ground the neutral conductor. This is because, when the neutral conductor is grounded, the maximum voltage to ground does not exceed 150 volts from any other conductor within the system. For condition 2, if the system is 3-phase, 4-wire, Y-connected in which the neutral conductor is used as a circuit conductor. 208Y, 120-volt, 3-phase, 4-wire system. 400Y, 230-volt, 3-phase, 4-wire system. 480Y, 277-volt, 3-phase, 4-wire system. The condition is satisfied by the following common systems and configurations. In these systems, the neutral conductor is utilized as a circuit conductor, necessitating that all 3-phase, 4-wire Y-connected systems operate with the neutral conductor solidly grounded. It is worth highlighting that certain systems, such as a 400Y, 230V and 480Y, 277V 3-phase, 4-wire system, may not have any line to neutral loads. Consequently, grounding of these systems is not mandatory but may be optional according to the provisions of 250.21. However, in the case of a 208Y, 120V system, grounding is required even if there are no line to neutral loads. This requirement is specified in accordance with 250.20B1. For the third condition, if the system is 3-phase, 4-wire, delta-connected, the midpoint of the one-phase winding is used as a circuit conductor. The illustration depicts a three-phase, four-wire delta-connected system that falls under this condition. In this system, a connection is established at the midpoint of one phase, enabling the supply of line to neutral loads. The grounded conductor in this configuration develops the same voltage as the two-phase conductors, A and C, which are connected at opposite ends of the winding that is midpoint grounded. It is important to note that the voltage between the phase B conductor and the grounded conductor is higher in this setup. The code includes additional requirements that address the arrangement and identification of the high leg in this particular system configuration. Further, same with the three phase, four wire Y connected systems, the neutral conductor is utilized as a circuit conductor, necessitating that all operate with the neutral conductor solidly grounded. For alternating current systems of over 1000 volts, as per section 250.20, c. Alternating current systems supplying mobile or portable equipment shall be grounded as specified in 250.188. Where supplying other than mobile or portable equipment, such systems shall be permitted to be grounded. According to this section, any alternating current system with a voltage of 1000 volts or higher that supplies mobile or portable equipment must comply with the grounding requirements specified in section 250.188. Section 250.188 outlines the guidelines for grounding systems that supply portable mobile equipment with a voltage exceeding 1000 volts. This section provides rules based on the power source, as indicated in section 250.188a. These rules include connecting all exposed non-current carrying metal parts to the grounding point of the system impedance device using an equipment grounding conductor, as stated in section 250.188b. Furthermore, it is essential to ensure that the voltage between the portable or mobile equipment frame and the ground does not exceed 1000 volts, considering the maximum ground fault current available, as outlined in section 250.188c. Additionally, the section requires the provision of ground fault and relaying systems to de-energize any high voltage component with a fault to ground, as specified in section 250.188d. Another requirement is to isolate and separate the grounding electrode from any other system or equipment grounding electrode by at least 6 meters. 
For trailing cables and couplers, compliance with the requirements of Part 3 of Article 400 for cables and Article 495.65 for couplers is necessary. Other AC systems over 1000 volts are permitted but are not required to be grounded. Section 250.20, D, Impedance Grounded Neutral Systems. Impedance grounded neutral systems shall be grounded in accordance with 250.36 or 250.187. These systems are grounded, but through an impedance device rather than through a solid connection as shown in the illustration. Section 250.36 applies to systems from 480 volts to 1 kV, and Section 250.187 to systems over 1 kV. Thank you all for watching.